Oh god, please stop. For the love of god. We're so screwed. We're so screwed. There's, there's nothing I can do about this. Well, on the plus side, she's braver than me. She's explored a bunch of new buildings that we didn't know existed. Oh my god, there's so much steel and so much cloth. And so many components as well. Please, don't go in the zombie room. Don't go in the zombie... She's gonna get bitten. She's absolutely... Oh, or not. Oh, she's just gonna kick their ass. Okay, fine. She's back. Okay, she's back. Now, on her little journey, she did find a... Where was it? What was it? Look at this. Another dead guy with power armor. Now, I'm probably not going to keep them in power armor or any tainted apparel permanently because obviously we've got quite a nice area that we've got fortified now. So, in theory, we're not going to need it and it's just going to be a mood boost for mood boost sake. Or a mood mood debuff, I guess. So, we'll, we'll, we'll pick it up and at least bring it home, especially with like, the gun and everything as well. What is that? Service rifle, 38%, so it's deteriorated quite a lot. This guy's probably been dead for, yeah, 2.2 days. That's a shame. Alright, um, oh, he wasn't even killed by a zombie, he was killed by an n Hydriodon. me too. What has he got? Power armor, tactical vest, and what are, you, what are you wearing right now, exactly? She's probably not gonna be able to carry this stuff back, seeing as she's got, oh my god, everything. Okay, let's send her home, and then let's come back out and get that later on, because there's also things like components we want to get, there's also things like Sabot rounds, whatever the hell those are too. So I might send Paula, Paula could be our... Although, saying that Rick would make more sense because of his high shooting stat as our sort of uh, explorer, right? There's not enough zombies right now for it to be prohibitive to explore. Still only 109. Now, bear in mind, we do have that ridiculous colony multiplier. It's like five times colony multiplier. So, the bigger our colony gets, the more zombies there are going to get uh, relative to that. So, it's a little risky, but we should be fine very quickly just uninstalling, reinstalling this wall. Obviously, popping out and going and grabbing that power armor. Even things like more shells, even if we never use them, we could just sell them off. There we go, back home safe. So, the goals for today, then, are very simple. Let's turn this base to something a bit more sustainable. Let's rip up, I mean, most of these buildings. Obviously, get a much bigger farm going. We've got an okay farm. It's certainly enough to last these three people, as long as you stay on top of harvesting, growing, that type of thing. Um, getting decent schedules set up, and obviously, decent bedrooms, things like that as well. Reinforcing the walls is definitely a short-term goal as well. But for the time being, I'd rather focus on getting a decent base set up because luckily the zombies act as quite a natural defense against the against any raiders we might have. Now against these guys, it obviously didn't work too well because they had explosives and obviously quite decent weapons. But to be fair, melee characters are some of the only ones that might be able to repel these zombies because we've set the zombies to easy to kill because there are literally going to be hundreds and hundreds of the damn things. Oh, who's starving? Um, starvation, big brain. Well... Uh, I mean, she's asleep, so that's not really my problem there. Right eye bit now, right big those destroyers already. Oh, God, that's not a good sign, is it? You've got major food poisoning, so you're also on the on, on the bad side of things here. Butchering what? Where is he going that he thinks he's butchering? Okay, no, I guess he was just trying to catch up after the uh, after the wall was taken out there. Is she okay as well? Dehydration, malnutrition. So we are actually almost out of food then. 8% grown. Do we have any meals in, in backpacks and whatnot? Let's just take a look here. Um, seven, in, 7 medicine. We've got a lot of stuff to drop off, but no. To, from the looks of it, we are completely out of food. Um, okay. That's a bit of a problem. Um, are there any... We could eat Bertha. I'm not going to eat Bertha, but we could eat Bertha. Or we could go out beyond the walls and maybe go for hunting a little bit. Um, and how? Well, I mean, we could harvest the rice now. We could always just harvest the rice now, or, or wait as long as it possibly could be. Wait until we get to, like, medium malnutrition or something like that, and then try and get this stuff so that we might get a little bit more of growth from it. You know what, let's not take any risks. Mood is one of the biggest killers, as we've seen before. We just have Paula basically running around outside the walls there, completely unattended. So I'd rather make sure that we have enough to uh, to keep us going for the timing. Now, what are we going to do? Did I, did I ever do anything with the power? I mean, clearly not, because we've got no power. Um, what are we looking at? So we've got a dearth of steel, so we need a little bit more steel before we can do anything. All these walls are steel, and we've got a whole bunch of metal tires in here as well. We can quickly rip up. So maybe start and work on that. I feel like we had a bit more progress than this, and it's like... No, 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 that's it. They removed the roof. I was going to say I thought we removed one of these buildings, but no, it was just the roof they got rid of in the end. So we can start deconstructing basically all of this now. There could be an argument for uninstalling some of it and keeping it around, but we've got so many spare walls this time around that it's not, it's not a huge problem. If there's any way, if any of you know any way to uh, fireproof the walls, now I don't think it's possible. I don't know if there's uh, some sort of game mechanic we can scum up, whether there's a particular way to build things that will prevent fire spreading or things like that. Um, but, a, but a method of preventing fires from the outside walls spreading to our internal walls, that's the one thing I'm concerned about right now, especially given this. Fires just seem to be kind of frequent. What is that? Oh, blaze bulb, right. I guess that explains a lot. So that's, that's something added by combat extended as far as I know to be able to craft... Um, 
sort of propellants like rockets, things like that, and grenades as well. So I'm somewhat concerned that it's just going to spread to these walls and we're going to have to spend all day just constantly fighting fires on this one building here. So if anybody knows of a way to fireproof some walls, please, for the love of God, let me know because I don't know any way to do it off the top of my head. So the one thing I need to set up is uh, obviously all of these schedules because this is kind of a mess, right? So let's just paste all that over. Um, we'll go for, I guess they can have a couple of hours of wreck when they wake up because ensuring, like I said, Mood is high. That's going to be the thing that really helps out this comic quite a lot. But it's not as if we're desperate to get work going. We're in a nice place. We're quite well defended. The only time we're going to be desperate for things to be built would be for, obviously, you know, defenses, walls, turrets, that type of thing. Turrets actually might not be a bad idea, rushing that down with some early game research. We've got a good researcher in the form of Big Brain. I believe Paula was also a glutter surgeon. What's... Oh, well, her intellectual is garbage, though. She's just good at... To say that she's a glutter world surgeon, she's only good at artistic and medical. From what I remember, the backstory is, like, glutter worlds don't have any need for doctors because machines do it or something like that, right? Um, oh, a bathroom will also need as well. Right, so we do, of course, have the hygiene. I've got a Keep bear that in mind and sort of keep keep that in my head as well. So we've got to build a bathroom or something like that. We'll, we'll dig up all of this shit and obviously expand the farm too. Maybe I should work on that first. Um, but I think for the time being, we'll keep doing what we're doing. We'll get rid of all of this. We'll use the resource we get from this to build the bathroom. That could be our next sort of short-term goal then, I guess. Um, seeing as that's a little more important. After that, then farms are important. Then we'll actually start building up and sort of making this space a little bit nicer. Now this I didn't even consider. There are still survivors, there are still caravans, there are still possibilities for trade. And we are neutral with everyone, you know, I don't think we've pissed anyone off. And obviously you're going to be the, the, the pirates and things that obviously naturally spawn. But there's still potential for training here, which means turrets and a main entrance might be really, really important. Because of course zombies aren't just going to naturally all rush over to our main entrance the second the walls come down. And, you know, this isn't World War Z or anything like that. So the traders can still get in, but the zombies, if they just wander nearby, can be shot by turrets. Um, maybe turrets then are way more important than I'm sort of taking into account here. So these guys are obviously screwed right now. The combat supply, they're just going to get eaten or devoured, or they're going to hang outside the walls until, you know, they eventually get killed off there. Nothing we can really do about that, but maybe then today trying to get a main entrance dealt with wouldn't be a bad plan as well. I'm going to alter the cooking bill here slightly as well, so that rather than cooking all that rice into meals, which obviously degrades faster, we'll leave it so that the rice can sit around just in the stockpile for ages. Um, so what do we want to do? We probably want to do... Uh, oh, I don't have that mod that lets us do X per colonist anymore. That's a shame. Um, so we've got three colonists right now. Let's just do it until we've got, I guess, nine meals. That's probably going to use all of our rice anyway. But they're going to be able to eat that before they rot, and that's the sort of important thing there. Big Brain, you need to get this wrench equipped if you're dismantling stuff, because it will give you a little bit more of a success chance there. So first thing then, focus on the farms. Like I said, let's get all of these floors dug up as well and sort of expand this. Don't mind this. This is probably just that Drake caravan I was talking about being completely wiped out there. Oh, God. Well, they're keeping the zombie numbers relatively down. I was going to say down, but no, there's 225. No, I guess not. Um, the fire is also still raging on, for those of you wondering. Constant roof collapse as well. Now, there was a suggestion yesterday that I wanted to float. Somebody said, could we maybe remove the fog of war at this point because we've already got our base sort of dealt with. We're not really doing what we were doing, what that we were planning on doing last time. The idea where we were going to go and go through a lot of different cities and sort of uh, dig through things. A lot of people, I think, just want to see the chaos, what's happening outside of the wall. So if, if you guys want to see that, I can understand why it would, it would sort of affect the difficulty of the mod pack somewhat as well. But if you guys want to see that, we, we're kind of cushy right now, and I do kind of agree with the idea that the fog of war isn't doing anything. You know, it's not really adding to the difficulty at this stage, because inside our walls, we know that we're safe, unless, they're, you know, we put a hole in it. But any walls we actually see growing in the, or any holes in the walls we see, we will be able to see, if that makes sense, because we, we've we, the fog of war doesn't affect that at all. So it's not really doing anything for the difficulty, it's just making it so we can't see what's actually out there in the world. So if you want to see that, let me know, and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll get that changed for tomorrow. Up and ready for another day, and there is an absolute massacre going on outside the walls. I, it's a wonder how any of these guys get any sleep whatsoever with the amount of noise going on out here. The amount of just death and screaming animals, and also screaming zombies, I guess. So, how do we... Do we ever finish off... We didn't ever finish off Bertha's, Bertha's coffin. Um, Rick, let's, let's get this dealt with, because I imagine they're still pretty sad about that as well. We will strip Bertha, and obviously take her useful stuff. Even though it's tainted, we do have a couple of psychopaths here that, uh, or at least Rick is bloodlusted, so we can use it. Um, get rid of that. There we go. And Bertha, let's get you buried as well. Thank you for your service. You did absolutely nothing this campaign, and you will be completely forgotten about in a couple of days. Let's get Rick geared up to go out in the world and sort of grab those components, grab whatever we might want. It's a little risky this early on, I will admit, especially when there's now 313 zombies. Their numbers have recovered very, very, very fast. We could always build some embrace and obviously work on a sort of similar entrance to what we had last time, whereby we were able to peek out and obviously go and have a look. But without the fog of war, we'd be able to do that a little bit easier. Um, okay, then, so... 
Let's uh, let's make sure everyone's in in inventories are empty to start with because for whatever reason they're just not naturally doing that. So she's still got a backpack, uh, a spare backpack that is the the plasteel helmet, the combat knife, and everything else as well. Uh, turns out the simple uh, plasteel helmet is actually better than the gas mask she's wearing right now. The gas mask though reduces toxic sensitivity, so it does have a, its own bonuses there too. Let's try get all of this spare shit just thrown on the floor. Thank you. That will also reduce her bulk and her mass, so in theory she'll move faster as well. Rick, what have you got? You've got six times medicine. Yeah, well, we'll get that dropped as well because it's not super, super important. Um, you might as well go about your business. Rick, come and put this helmet on because you're going to need that, my man. Now, what's he wearing in terms of gear? He's got an armor vest. Did we not find... Oh, so that power armor outside then is just super, super valuable. Um, where did they die? Was all the way down... It was, it was around, like, here, right? Am I going insane? Um, oh, no, there it is. Right, okay. So that power armor is super, super valuable because that plus his, his plasteel helmet means he's going to be... Very difficult for these zombies to kill. Um, obviously, we're going to have to be very careful with how we go out here and how we deal with this. But for the time being, that's not too bad. Um, so drop this medicine too, because it's just more bolt that we don't really need right now. Okay, that's basically him as, as, as well equipped as we can be. What about oh, whoa, whoa, what about this mask, this radiation mask? Was this also quite good? Um, the armor sharp and blood in there is actually way worse than uh, than what Rick's wearing right now. Okay, so we'll let them also pick through this as well, because I'm, I'm pretty sure Rick will automatically equip any of this stuff that he can, because it's, you know, even though it's tainted apparel, he can use that. Then I do want to kind of risk this power armor. I, th I think it's definitely worth the risk, as we've seen previously. The zombies versus power armor. Power armor absolutely trumps them. With a helmet as well, with a, with a very well-defended helmet, this guy could be very difficult to kill. Um, let's go ahead and stick down some embrasures in that case so we can sort of peek out and run around. Ideally, putting embrasures here so that we can see out will be a lot better because obviously get much longer vision. And then we can just run straight down. Where is it? Straight down there, straight through there and go and grab that. We've got quite nice vision on things. We have to see any zombies down here from, from all the way back here. So it should be a fairly safe run. Um, what have we got a shit ton of? Got a load of wood, we got a load of steel. Either one of those are absolutely fine. Um, let's go security then and sort of see what we can... Was this security from Brazier's structure? Structure, that's it. Alright, um, right. so let's go for wooden. Wooden is fine. Just put down a couple of those just so we've got a decent vision on... In fact, covering that whole wall in it is probably a much safer idea. And what if you got 6.7, um, 2, or... Oh man, we've got no wood good construction, huh? Okay, fine. Oh no way, one of the caravans got killed. Okay, that's very, very good. So what have they got? They've got shield out, they've got smoke pop out, obviously not too super useful there. Rifle ammo, LMGs. Ooh, this this trip out seems like a great idea because there's a lot of ammo there. And of course, ammo is going to be the one thing we struggle with until we've unlocked the the reloading bench. Um, Yeah, I'm liking this idea more than more. I wanted to get, obviously, the farms, maybe some sort of uh, some sort of freezer system set up as well. And then, obviously, power would be incredible. But honestly... It's kind of... I'd, I'd like to maybe go there. Oh, shit. Right. There's a caravan right there. Um, don't know how we can actually see that. The fog of war, obviously, isn't kind of working as intended. Oh, these guys will clear out the zombies for us quite nicely, too. So if we want to go out and leave and, and go and get that power armor, now might be the best time to do it. Um, Rick. Rick, maybe now. Maybe maybe we seize the day, my friend. Um, quickly, quickly, quickly run down here. Where are you? Come on, hurry up. Okay, there we go. Let's let Rick also help them just clear out a couple of these boys as well. Or not at all. Um, have we got to get right up to the embrasures? There we go, okay. That's it, just let him take pot shots at anything we've got kicking around, right? I think we are actually safe to head out there in the world, aren't we? There's a lot of them too, so this, this should be able to defend itself, and it should be able to keep the front of the base clear for when he wants to come back. Alright, so let's go ahead and just quickly uninstall that. Um, let's go, I'll let him reload as well, of course. Let's go ahead and queue that up after that. Right, okay. Let's do it. Let's go and see what we can find out here. I don't want to overextend. We're just here for the power armor and anything else we can grab immediately next to the walls of the way back. That's never a good sign because those things are basically like um, Bumble Drone Queen, even. Those things basically like Cazador. So the fact that the zombies have taken that out is a little bit worrying here. Right, go and strip Simon. There we go. That's what we're after right there. And of course, this guy's bloodlust, so he doesn't have to worry about uh, about the the connotation of it being tainted or anything like that. Okay, sweet. So he doesn't have any trousers now. I think I think you can wear trousers, like regular trousers with power armor, can't you? Look at that. Okay, so this guy's going to be very, very, very difficult for the zombies to kill. We also probably want to pick up whatever the hell else you can fit in your backpack. Let's focus on the ammo. Let's focus on tactical vest, obviously very good as well. Um, then I guess the armor vest, because that will save lives. And then I guess also maybe the flat pants too. Um, has he still got room? He does. How much more? Obviously, he's got plenty more room. 
Okay, you know what? I'm gonna say let's not worry about this stuff. You know, it's a bunch of old tainted clothes. That's not really too important. We've got a knife. And we've got like a bowl of, of, of yayo there. Instead, let's focus on maybe grabbing some of this stuff here. Or there's even those 34 components just lying around in a building. Now, these guys have come from down here. So this is hopefully gonna be, you know, easily to e easy to get to. Um, apparently, we can come up through here. That's all right, then. Let's try that. Shouldn't be any zombies in this area. And like I said, these guys have already... Ah, oh, fuck. Um, these guys have already come through. What are you doing? Oh, they're both fucking... The second these walls are open... Just out there. Get back in the base. I should really focus on reinstalling those walls. Obviously, whenever we choose to leave in the future. Right, Rick, come and grab. You know what? That means you can grab some of this other stuff on the way through. Then go and grab those shells on your way past. Um, can we pick them all up? No, we can't. Okay, inventory is full. Shit, what else has she got then? Nothing. She's just so weighed down by like the flat pants and the flat jacket. In hindsight, probably a bit pointless having that equipped. Because obviously the zombies aren't firing flat last time I checked. We'll grab all of this stuff on the way back though. You go and clear a path for Rick then. Because he's going to be a little more weighed down. Um, pick up all the components. Fantastic stuff. Okay. Um, wait, you can haul them all, but he can't pick them all up. Welcome to Rimworld. There we go. Perfect. Alright. Um, you get those home as soon as possible. What the fuck's he doing? Attacking Rogue. Okay, this is one of the issues I think that we might have with the Fog of War mod. Is that he's trying to lock onto a zombie that he clearly can't see. And that's just interrupted his work. So that might be another big reason why I might just override whatever people want to see with the cop. For fuck's sake, don't drop your gun. You weird man. Okay, there we go. Uh, and prioritize hauling those as well. If you, I mean, whatever else you can fit, he's going to get those instead. What the fuck is he doing? Oh, God, that's really annoying. Okay, we'll have to hopefully not, not, not worry about that too much. We'll have to keep on ignore for the time being anyway. Um, yeah, let's just grab, let's go ahead and allow all. What do we want to prioritize here? Um, really, we've got no need for any of this stuff yet, but we might as well just grab it anyway. Uh, pick up, do we just haul as much as we can? Just haul as much as we can. Prioritize all in those, and then she should grab up anything else that she can there. Yeah, that's fine. Perfect. Right, and the second they're through the wall, oh, we got zombies coming in. We got zombies coming in. Rick, uh, stop hauling those components for at least one second, my man. Let's get this back installed. There we go. Okay. Oh, shit. What is he doing? Gathering wood to hauling inventory. Stop doing that, for fuck's sake. Ah. One thing about Rimworld that's already driving me mad is, is I can only assume that's one of the sub mods we've got, because I thought it was common sense. I've uninstalled common sense. Um, mainly to prevent exactly things like this going on here. Uh, but I don't know exactly what other mod might be causing that. Just back off. Don't shoot the fucking bear. Oh my god, and now we've shot that and now they're mad at us. Honestly, I would need more fine control over the colonists. And I feel like we've got some mods that are just making that, as you can quite clearly see, a gigantic pain in the ass. Um, okay, I'll have to reassess the mod load order then and sort of see what... He's just fucking standing there. Thank you, finally for moving. I appreciate that a lot. Right, so now we're gonna have to drop the wooden embrasure. And we have to right, okay, try again. Um, prioritize working on that. Thank you very much. Uh, again, like, what are you doing? What the fuck are you doing? Get in the base, Rick. For fuck's sake, you're driving. Why does he stand still for five minutes before he actually does anything? Lord, thank you. Okay, right, so let's go ahead and haul all of those as well, because those are fairly essential, I'd say, to get into stop as soon as possible. Thank you, Big Brain, for also going outside the walls there, you absolute psychopath. So food is looking pretty good. We've expanded the farms quite nicely. We've got a rice harvest basically ready to get in there. It's, it's like 89% grown or something like that. It's quite, it's quite, oh, 73 done on some of it, but it's enough to get some food and obviously last a couple more days there. So power is now the big important one. We've got enough steel. That's why I was waiting for, you know, until now so they can rip up all these floors. We've got enough steel now to be able to build something. So let's go for, I mean, wood power generator would work fine if you want to do a big enough farm to obviously grow enough wood to be able to power that. But I think we'll go for wind turbines for the time being. It might be a good fallback, you know, ripping up all this stuff, building a massive, massive tree farm, and then using that as our main source power, because, you know, it's consistent. We know exactly how long a tree is going to take to grow. We know exactly how much stuff we're going to get out of it. And if we do need some more, we could just dismantle some of these old, you know, crappy beds or whatever we've got lying around. Um, for the time being, then, let's put down a couple of wind turbines. Can we fit two in there? No, we'd have to rip up another wall. Um, we could always put them, I guess, uh, in front of one another, like there. That'll do it. Okay, so that's going to last us hopefully quite a while, and that doesn't... Oh, that's, that's a very, very lucky fit there, huh? Let's make sure that we've also got this place cleared out so things like poplar trees are not affecting things. Let's also make sure it's not roofed over slightly. Um, we are good then by the looks of it. Nice. Okay. So we get that worked on as soon as possible. Now, windmills aren't fantastic. Like I said, you generally need a lot of batteries to make windmills worthwhile. Half the time they're producing no power. Half the time they're at max power. At least I assume... I assume that on average, they produce an average amount of power, right? Anyway, more to the point, they're, they're, they're unreliable. So with a huge amount of batteries, we got very lucky finding that big old building. We should be, we should be good. What the fuck? What the fuck? Um, okay. That's one hell of a way to be woken up in the morning, huh? Um, squad up, I guess. 
So as long as Big Brain stood there, Rick could come in down sort of parallel, or sort of adjacent, sorry, and shoot across. That way we're probably not going to end up killing Big Brain with weaponry. Um, can we not just open fire at their pods? That would, that would be kind of nice. Got to make sure these guys aren't set to ignore anymore as well. That's the one downside to the Fog of War, War mod, is I am trying to sort of micromanage or having to micromanage all of that stuff as well. Right, there we go. Immediately going to come out your thing and snort some cocaine rather than uh, fight back. That works fine. That works fine. Thank you. Thank you for the free shit there. What did he have in his backpack? Uh, cloth flat pants. Nothing really particularly useful. We might as well strip him anyway, because of course Rick can get to choose out of his stuff there. Um, nice. She's alive. Uh, she's got devil strand flat pants. That's obviously very nice there. Let's go ahead and strip her and finish her off then. Now, before I do that, is she any good? Um, she's not got bad intellectual. Uh, maybe we could take her as a prisoner. Bleeding out one hour. Um, she's got psycho addiction, so actually keeping her around is going to be a pain in the ass. But, I did say, and we've never actually done this before in Rimworld, that I was trying to save everybody we could. You know what? Today's your fucking lucky day, my friend. Uh, we've already basically got a prison set up here, so let's turn that into four prisoners. And let's get her hauled into there. We need someone on warding duty anyway, because we have the snap out of it mod. And the, the way that works is that, um, if you have a warden, they can go out to people on a mental break and try and break them out of it, depending on their social skill. So this could be very good. Now, we do need to immediately start tending to her. So this is now a prisoner medical bed. Are we going to be able to do this in time, or is she just going to fucking die? Shot her in the torso. Oh, she's shot her in the heart. Right in the heart. Ooh, ooh. Okay, I wasn't expecting that. Um... Big Brain, you are our medical queen. Let's get her... Uh, let's get her captured then. This is going to be very, very risky. What are you doing? You're reloading. Reloading over the body of your fallen enemies. That's pretty brutal. Um, let's immediately give you Dr. Care, but nothing else. Let's prioritize tending to her right now. This is going to be, I, I think, almost impossible to keep her alive, but we'll try it regardless. Being shot in the heart does not normally lend itself well. Okay, she's, she's actually managed to do it. That was the important thing, and, and we're, I think we're fine then. What else we got? They've dropped right on top of us again. Ah, for fuck's sake. I didn't actually turn the difficulty down, I should point out, since the last episode. So this is uh, this is where we're really going to get our ass happening to us. Now, because of Fog of War, they could be, um, well, fucking anywhere. Ah, oh, right, there, there we go. We can actually see the drop pods. Oh, no way. They're inside the bedroom again. Um, uh, uh, where are you? Oh, you're just sleeping on the floor. Help me here. Help me, for God's sake. Okay, stand there. You stand there, and we'll just shoot across. That way... Oh, no, that's a terrible idea. You go and stand there. There we go. So that way we're not going to end up killing one another with... Please, sorry. There we go. Good work. Okay, kill the other one as well. Uh, oh, you know what? You can just stand there then. I didn't realize she'd be immediately running back in our direction. Another prisoner. Oh, God, another prisoner. She's got good social, though. That's exactly what we need. Okay, cool. Um, what is she like, then? Uh, she's not got really great gear, so it's not definitely worth stripping her. Um, all right, fine. You know what? This is getting a little bit out of hand, I will admit. Let's go for medical and prisoners. Um, we'll have to move our people. I mean, we could always set up a new bedroom for them. I mean, set, set, set up three separate bedrooms sort of in this building instead. Well, that's something. Okay, how's she doing? Is she actually going to make it through? Uh, yeah, almost certainly. And how are you doing? Because you were shot pretty bad there as well. Six hours. Wow, this is um, this has gotten a little bit weird all of a sudden. We might have a five-person colony in a zombie apocalypse scenario. So now we're going to have to quickly go across any of these spare buildings we've got and reinstall all of the stuff. So let's go ahead and uh, turn that off for prisoners. Let's reinstall that. Okay, so I'll we'll have to set up a barracks for the time being. So of course we need to actually build, re rebuild the structure of the base now to be able to fit everyone in so they've got separate bedrooms. Which is kind of what we need to do anyway, so it's not a big deal. Right, have we got another bed somewhere or am I going to have to build one from fresh? Obviously we're not going in these buildings. These are super, super condemned. Um, yeah, no, we're going to need a fresh bed. Oh no, we've got another one here, aren't we? Well, that's fine. Um, let's go ahead and reinstall that one as well, so that should be it's not fantastic, don't get me wrong, cramming everyone into a single room like that, but it's going to be more convenient, I guess, for obviously, you know, waking up, breakfast, whatever else, um, so that's going to be moved there, and then we've also got an end table in here it's, it's only a minor amount of comfort don't get me wrong, probably not worth doing to some extent, but, you know, even that might contribute to the mood a little bit here and then we'll also go for this one as well let's go ahead and claim that and reinstall that one okay, perfect, so that's actually not too terrible and that should be able to reach all three beds too um, Big Brain is tensing, so Rick and Paula have a job now, oh shit, you okay, you've been shot as well oh god, a kidney's been shot fuck, okay, um oh man, uh, right, 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 right. okay, that's not, that's not a big deal, bear with me on this one um, let's put this down here Shit, okay, um, this could be a concern. Let's put this down, let's put this down as, as close as we can. Put that there, turn that into medical. You go and rest, just go and rest. When Big Brain, so which one's more likely to die? Six hours, three hours. She's already in our colony as well, by the way, so let's go ahead and do that one first. 
Do we want to just go and grab that medicine? We've got enough time to obviously go and grab it for the time being. Doctor, I need to make sure always has medicine on her. Um, you know what? You come through into here instead, just to save a little bit more time, because you're still capable of walking. So let's get you through to here. There we go. All right. Um, so Rick can work on the bedrooms. Attacking. No, no, no. Stop. Oh, this is so fucking annoying. There we go. Um, you start working on the bedrooms then. There we go. And then let's get you in here on a sleeping spot. Just drop where you are. Let's move you back this way a little bit. I'm really microing this if you can't tell because I really don't want to lose any of these people. Right, there we go. Um, and then prioritize tending. Or don't use the medicine in the backpack at all. You know, it's not a big deal. Do need to make sure that I've got that set up in the future though. Right, okay. And then because she's got that six extra, we'll go and drop that in here and make sure these other people are tended as well. Okay, not a problem. Quality 100% tending there. Oh, good work. Okay, not a concern. Um, don't bother feeding her. She can feed herself. That's not a concern at all. Right, get this shit dropped, and then let's also start working on you next. I guess we can go best quality medicine. I mean, our, all of our medicine is going to be best quality. I hate that you have to do that as well, that you can't see people to uh, manage them. You have to actually go and un unveil the fog of war before you can sort of change even minor things like that. Right, start tending to her. Death in four hours. You are going to be absolutely fine because you're one of the only prisoners getting medicine here too. Kind of expecting that. That's the downside to not being able to use, uh, to, to be able to use medicine. We didn't have a choice, seeing that she was going to die in an hour. Sick for an infection. Where is it? It is an infection in the heart. That is normally, uh, normally lethal, I believe, in real life if you get an infection in your heart. But that's okay. Let's not worry about it too much. Or at least, uh, it's very unlikely you'll survive from that. Being in a bloody tiny little cell here. Being treated by a big brain, the psychopath. Be if your doctor was big brain delicious, I would probably not be down for that. Doctor delicious. A group of tribes people have arrived, so it's the sister of villager Paola there. Um, I don't think that really matters too much. I'm sure the zombies should be able to take these guys out. As their tribe, although, we do have to concern ourselves with those guys throwing bombs at the walls. I'm going to send Rick just to go and stand at the embrasures to make sure that we aren't going to be... Oh god, it's already kicking off, huh? Just to make sure that we're not going to be completely wiped out here. Um, I don't really care about the zombies too much. The, the, the tribals are the only ones that could really pose a threat. Should be able to take him out from here, no problem. Yeah, there we go, nice. We've even got him to press start off with. Let's go for single fire, because we don't actually have that many bullets to be just, just firing off, rattling off rounds there without any sort of uh, any sort of caution. Right, okay. Um, I'm going to say ignore, and I'm just going to manually target them myself. Well, there's one down. I think the zombies are very much just doing my job for me here. Um, you can sort of hear in the background some brief scuffling. Again, this is where maybe the fog of war being gone. Tension's kind of nice. But it being gone, it would be able to sort of give us a bit more information there about whether or not this is, uh, this is something we don't have to worry about. Oh, man, she's also set to... God damn it. Um, yeah, this is one good reason to turn off Fog of War is that we can't really do anything and also defend ourselves at the same time. Because the, the game just doesn't know how to deal with it. Um, yeah, look, she's completely frozen there. She's completely frozen there. Ah, uh, that's a real shame. Okay, so the Fog of War just might have to go no matter what. I, I did like the tension, but it's got a lot of technical issues with it as well, as you can see. So it's kind of a... Oh, pirate merchants, you guys can get wiped out. You know, I think it's safe to leave that. We'll be able to see if they do get past all the zombies, because we'll see all the explosions happening outside our walls. Finally, there we go. Power is online. Okay, this is pretty great. I know it's taken a long time to get here, but making sure, obviously, food has been set up. Dealing with these two new prisoners, reinstalling the base and having to move everything around has been kind of a pain in the ass, really. But this is this is very good. This is great progress today. If we could get some also batteries installed, maybe like right now, just so that we're not completely wasting all this power. Oh, God, what's going on here? They just get into a social fight. Yeah, okay. Not a big deal. Not a big deal at all. They're, they're, they can go and rest that off and stop being dicks for the timing. Oh, all these batteries still have power in, don't they? So they do actually maintain that. They do discharge over time as well. Um, but we've actually kept quite a lot of power just kicking around there. Nice work. Okay. Um, now, in regards to the base's power, what are we looking at? It's a state. It's an absolute state. Oh, God, there are power cables fucking everywhere. Um... Right, okay. Not not a big deal, obviously, but is is kind of a little bit hideous there. So we'll make sure this is installed. This is going to be our freezer. I'm trying to do a little bit of stockpile management as well. Obviously, moving all this shit out of the base into another building to act as a more permanent stockpile wouldn't be a bad idea either. Um, okay, so let's get the stove sort of there. Butcher's table doesn't really matter where we put it. I mean, I mean as we've discussed before... Apparently, just having them in the same room is, is, a, is a negative to your uh, cleanliness and your infection. Or, s sorry, the food poisoning chance. So, I mean, I'm not building a whole separate room for the butcher's table when we don't even have separate bedrooms for all of our people yet. That can wait. I should also point out that it's probably unlikely that we're ever going to use the butcher's table. Because, of course, there are, no, there are no animals on the map. And I'm definitely not going to open up the edges of the map to let the animals in either. Alright, you know what? This has not been bad. We've obviously got a nice expansion on the farm. We've got potentially two new colonists there. Um, I should probably get that dead body out there because he's probably not too pleased about that. 
need to make sure those are being recruited as much as possible. We don't have any really good wardens right now, so hopefully if we can recruit the social one first. If we get, like, an inspiration or something, which I think is, let's be honest, kind of unlikely here. If we get an inspiration inspired recruitment, we will focus on that guy first so that we can bring them on board. And obviously they in turn can recruit more prisoners. This has not been bad. We have gear for them too, don't forget. We've got, like, a whole bunch of guns now as well. What is that? We've got, like, one, two, three, four, five guns there. Insane. And we've actually got the ammo for them too. Research is going to be fairly important coming up soon as well. Let's just make sure everyone's on highest quality medical care as well. Um, yeah, we're looking all right there. So that's not that's what bothers South Tending either. So this is fine. I'm, I'm pretty happy with how this is going. I think we're still fairly safe. I will turn off Fog of War for next time, mainly because of the technical issues. I personally quite like it because it does add to the tension, but I think it will make for a better viewing experience for you guys as well. And at the end of the day, that's the most important thing for me. Thank you all for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. I think it's been a very, very good one for the calling. I just want to keep playing, but unfortunately, you know, I think if I upload a four-hour video, people will get a little bit annoyed at me. Big thank you to Alpha Scuff, Anthony Gawley, Asuna Kirito, Atmos, Bacon Kit, and Sidini, Crazy Pack, Krosis, Donald, Fukuno Vasquez, Fluffinata, Gogola, Sarik, Jimbo, Jonah Waters, Jocelyn Dean Tesla, Justin Wallace, Caden Carter, Michael Mullen, Muskratful, Nat Buskus, 911, Nathan Flores, Necrofenum, Pelvis Presley, Rodin, Scott, Scaz, Somnus, Shayek Sinclair, Stannis the Manister, Forsaken One, T-Bag Cruz, Tom Terry 18, Tyler Kendall, Vacuus Packers, and William Green for their support the Insane Tea Lovers on Patreon. Thank you for making the channel possible. Thank you guys for supporting YouTube in 2019. Thanks for making all of this uh, it's reasonable and and fun and nice and not at all a horrible burden where I starve to death. Much appreciated. And thank you as well has to go out to Asro, Anna Person, Aiden W, Andrew Wilson, Austin Taylor, Attila, Bordoom, Ben Trope, Best Plus Max, Better Valerian, Black Double H, Chris, David Van Diepen, Don, Don Connie 217, Easier to Pronounce Name, Emerald Beam, Exploding Knees, Fraser Brennan, Gabriel Van Ders, Gaz, Genji Zerko, Gompo, Gray, Hedge Demar, Henrik Stensgaard, Icarus, Icy the Great, Irish, Israel, Isaac Burroughs, Jay Lara, Jacob Wolfie, James Barnes, Jason Sushu, Jose, Yuan DeVries, Jessica Smith, John Holiday, Jordan Campbell, Joseph Beer, Justin Plot, Justin Walters, Luana Thomas, Luke Wallace, Matthew Monty, Nathaniel Limburg, Nick, Noah Gallimore, Pan Samu, Panther Pearl, Payback 1 through 7, Peyton Danisar, Rush Nalgar, Billionaire, Smart One, Talar, The Bloody Knight, Belonkari, Voodoo Mumbo, Wesley Grayson, Wilson Atef, Wolfie Yorkus, Zachary Martz, and Zico 2. Thank you for your guys' support as well. Big shout out to the Twitch subs. We're doing some more Twitch streams very, very soon. Got a series planned for that. So keep your eyes open. And I shall see you guys all tomorrow, I guess, for hopefully some, some pretty nice colony development.